Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, it's inspired by a question from Kathy G. She asked, could you do an image transfer, say on a canvas, to start a painting, like put a pattern or design on here and then paint on top of it? And you know what? You absolutely can. And I'm gonna show you how in this video. Here's the image that I'm gonna put onto the canvas. Now I've taken this image and printed it on my inkjet printer onto the transfer film. And I wanna make sure that it's the printed side that goes down into the transfer solution. As I'm putting this stuff on here, I want you to notice how I'm paying close attention to getting it everywhere because I want this image to go everywhere on this canvas. So I'm especially making sure that I get the edges, that I've got the center. And so I will go across it both ways, both horizontally and vertically to make sure that I've got some of the solution everywhere because without the solution, the image isn't going to transfer. Now I'm going to put printed side down of the transfer film. And now comes the tricky part. What makes this tricky is that this is an uneven surface. So you've got the center of the canvas, which sags down just a little by the nature of being a stretch canvas. And then you've got the edges where the stretcher bars are that are very, very firm. So that's why I'm going to go over it a little bit more than usual with that brayer to make sure that I've got good contact between the transfer film and the canvas. But when I'm doing this, by the way, I am using a very light pressure. You don't have to push very hard, but you will need to do a little bit more of it simply because it is a stretched canvas. Now, once you've got this done, you need to wait two minutes before you lift up that transfer film. I just went through that image transfer process very quickly. And that is really all that it takes once you know how the ink aid process works to do one. It is that fast. But if this is your first time seeing it or you're new to it, you might have some questions about it. Like you might wonder like, how do you take the transferees concentrate and mix it up to make the solution that I spread on there? Or you might be wondering how much of it to use or, oh, well, just so many questions that you might have. And that's more than what I can put in this video. So I've got an entirely separate video that's all about doing an image transfer for the very first time. And it walks you through everything you need to know to get started from how much to use, what kind of printer to use, all of that. And I'll have a link down below for you. But now the two minutes are up. We've waited for this transfer film. So now let's lift up that film and see what's underneath. When you're lifting up the transfer film, you want to do it slowly, gently. So you'll notice that I am taking my time here as I'm peeling it off. Now this is a do what I say and not what I do thing. Cause I get so excited at looking at what's under that transfer film. And as I'm lifting it up, I forget to hold the back of it or the bottom of it, because as I get near the end, you're going to see how the transfer film kind of slips and slides a little bit and stretches the image out just a little bit near the top of this canvas. If I'd kept one hand on the back to keep that transfer film from slipping and sliding as I got near the end, that wouldn't have happened. Part of the reason why I have a hard time remembering that is that I really like that look, that little bit of serendipity that happens with image transfers. To seal or not to seal, that is the question. Since I know I wanna put some layers on top of this, I am gonna seal it. And there are two main ways to seal these. One is by using a spray, so something like this Krylon matte finish, or you can use something like gel medium. Now, they have their pros and cons. So this stuff is fast, it's smooth, it's easy, but it's stinky and it needs to be done outdoors. This stuff, it's not smelly, but it takes a couple of coats and you have to put it on carefully. So which one's right for you? Well, that is personal preference because I like to work inside under the camera for you guys. I'm going to do the matte medium and I'm going to show you how. I've done two ink aid image transfers here. One of them we're not going to seal at all. And the other one we're going to seal so you can see how they behave differently when we add the layers on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some gel medium and I'm going to squeegee it on. What I want to do is get a thin layer of gel medium on there with a small amount of pressure and as few passes as possible. The more that you work it or the more pressure that you use, the more likely something is to smear. Now the tool that I'm using here, I absolutely love. It's a color shaper. And, but what if you don't have one of those? What else can you use? Well, do you have an old hotel key card, an old gift card, that kind of thing? You can use that too. I'm going to put some of the gel medium on the edge of the gift card. And then I'm going to squeegee that gel medium on. The two big factors for keeping things from smearing is doing it in as few passes as possible and using a very small amount of pressure. To make sure that there aren't any little areas missed on this, 
I'm going to put a second layer of gel medium on. Now I went vertically last time. This time I'm going to go horizontally. And you might be thinking, Carolyn, doesn't look like you're being so careful this time. You are absolutely correct. Because that first time I was worried about things smearing. But on the second one, I really don't have to worry about it because like 95% of it was already sealed from that first layer of gel medium. So this one is just that double check, make sure that everything is fully covered. Then I'm going to let it dry. Does sealing it make a difference? Well, let's look at the two side by side as we add some watercolor and paint to it. I'm going to start with watercolor here and I'm using it on the not sealed image transfer. And you might be thinking, wow, it's not really smearing that yellow staying yellow. Well, that's because I'm only going over it once, maybe twice, and I'm using extremely light pressure. Just like when applying the gel medium, the more pressure you use or the more times you work over it, if it's not sealed, then things are going to smear. So if things are not sealed, I have to be careful. I have to be delicate. I have to really think about what I'm doing. But if the image transfer is sealed, then I can use normal pressure. I can actually go over an area as many times as I want and not worry about the image smearing. So here's what happens if I use normal pressure and I go over an area multiple times on the one that's not sealed. I want you to notice how that yellow is starting to change. That is the black from the image transfer smearing around. If you're using acrylic paint, the same things apply. If you're using a light pressure, if you're using as few passes as possible, meaning don't work over it a whole bunch, you're not going to see much smearing, like right there with the acrylic paint. And if you're working on an image transfer that's sealed, that means you can work over it multiple times. You can use normal pressure. You don't have to be nearly as careful with it. Now, if I were to do that same thing over on the not sealed one, wait till you see what color that pink paint becomes. What about other art supplies that you have? How do you know if they're going to do this on an image transfer that's not sealed? Well, anything that's water-based is going to do this. So what is the answer to that big question to seal or not to seal? Well, now that you understand what's going to happen if you seal it or don't, you can make an informed decision about what's right for you. For me, in this case with this canvas, I'm going to seal it before I add some watercolor. I sped up the camera here because you get how this process works. You've been watching this video. So you know that after doing it one way, I let it dry and then I'm going to do the gel medium in the other direction on there to make sure that I've got everything covered. I'm going to let that gel medium dry and then it's time to bring in some color. All I'm doing is coloring in the more open rectangles in this design. To me, this is kind of like a make your own paint by number. Once I've got that image on there, then I'm simply picking some colors and filling in the open spaces. So if you've ever got a pattern or design that you want to use to start a painting and you're wondering how can you easily get it onto a canvas, well, the Inkade Image Transfer is a great way to do it. If you're looking for more ideas to use with image transfers, I've got an entire playlist here on YouTube for you. One of the questions that I get asked a whole bunch about these image transfers is, are they glossy? And if you've got an unsealed Inkade Image Transfer, they are a little bit glossy. But what if you don't want that? What if you want them to be matte? Well, you've watched this video, so you know what to do. If you put that thin layer of gel medium over it, the gloss goes away. Also too, if you use one of the matte sprays, like what I showed earlier in the video, the Krylon, that will also make the gloss go away. One of the fun things to do with watercolor is to make big puddles of color that take hours and hours to dry and you get some cool effects. Well, I'm not doing that here. And there's a reason for that. Because of the gel medium that I used, if I leave water sitting on top of it for long, you know, where it takes the, those big, beautiful puddles that take hours to dry, sometimes the gel medium can start to bubble up a little bit. And that's simply all that water on top of that gel medium. I haven't had that happen when I'm using generous amounts of paint, but when I've got big puddles of watercolor, I have noticed that happening. So just keep an eye out for that as you're playing. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. I so appreciate you taking time out of your day and sharing it with me. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more of the fun, more of the play, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as there's a new video out. And if you'd like to know more about Inkade, you can check them all out at their website, inkade1.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.